open our hymnals to number 314. 314, reach out and touch. 314.
Joshua Zacharias come and show us the video. And before he gets up here, we've, we've had a wonderful week with him here. He's been involved in just about every aspect of ministry that we have. And he even went out and tried to shoot people with paintballs, and it was dodging paintballs. Yes, you know, it was so. crawling all over the ground. I saw it. <laughs> so he's, he's paid a price for sure. But uh, let's see, go ahead and, and uh, run your video if you would. Ready? Australia is a land of beauty, rich with exotic wildlife and breathtaking scenery. The people of Australia are a beautiful people as well, known for being diverse, laid back, and fun loving. And they're crazy about sports, enjoying popular sports like cricket and Aussie rules football. Australians love sports so much, it has been said they are more religious about sport than about religion itself. Unfortunately, there is a great deal of truth to that statement. Australia is a very secular society. Of Australia's population of 25 million, 30% claim no religion. And church attendance is not a priority for most Australians, with nearly half of Australia's population saying they never attend church. Only 20% of the population attend religious services on a regular basis. Australians are largely unchurched and in great need of the gospel. Hello, I'm Josh Zacharias, and God has called me to serve Him in the country of Australia. God blessed me with a Christian home, and I accepted Christ at a young age. Even as a kid, I had a burden for souls, and I felt the Lord was calling me into ministry. While I was involved in my church's ministries growing up, I didn't actually surrender to full-time service until my sophomore year at Pensacola Christian College, when God directed me to change my major to pastoral ministry. After graduation, I continued my studies at Pensacola Theological Seminary, and at the same time, God opened an awesome opportunity for me to serve Him on staff at Pensacola Christian College, where I gained valuable ministry experience. While on staff, God began to guide me into missions. He led me to Australia on two mission trips, and used these trips to touch my heart for the people of Australia. Before the first trip, my team leaders, John and Michelle, were praying that God would use the trip to call some of the team members to full-time missions in Australia. God answered their prayer by using that trip to open my heart to the possibility of doing missions in Australia. On one of my first days in the country, John introduced me to an Australian pastor. He said, this is Josh, he's a ministerial student, and immediately, <coughs> Pastor Manny told me, we need pastors in Australia. On my trips, God touched my heart for the tremendous spiritual needs of Australia, walking through the malls or streets of Melbourne, or letterboxing homes with gospel packets in the outback. I saw scores of people and could not help but realize the vast majority of those souls were lost. As we traveled and worked in kids' clubs, youth rallies, and camp ministry, I was able to see the great need for laborers to reach the loss of Australia. Through my trips, I was able to visit four of Australia's largest cities, as well as many outback towns, and personally see the need for more churches in the country. With these needs in mind, I prayed and sought counsel for about a year for God's direction. I wanted to be sure of God's calling. In time, God did confirm that He was calling me by speaking to me through Matthew 16, 24. Then said Jesus unto His disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross, and follow me. I then began making plans to follow Christ to Australia. As part of my preparation, I was able to intern at my home church, the Campus Church of Pensacola, Florida, under Pastor Jeff Redlin, where I gained practical ministry insights and experience. I believe God has called me to Australia to help meet the needs that I've seen there, to evangelize the lost, to equip believers for effective service, and to establish churches for God's glory. To begin working toward these goals, I believe the Lord has led me to work temporarily with Pastor Manny in Calvary Baptist Church, a well-established church in the city of Melbourne. Working with Calvary will give me time to adjust to the culture, learn ministry the Australian way, and make preparations to begin establishing churches. Australia is a country of staggering beauty, vast diversity, and lovely people, but it is a country of staggering needs. Would you prayerfully consider partnering with me to help meet those needs in Australia through your prayers and your support? Right, while we're setting up here, 
I will say also that although we talked about paintball and things like that, uh, the brother has been engaged not only passively in listening to our ministry, but he's been actively engaged in it. And Friday night, he, he brought one of the best messages the Lord used him to speak on the, the rich man and Lazarus, the parable that Jesus gave. It was wonderful. Thank you for that message. I was definitely encouraged by it. So just letting you know that part as well. Um, the words in Spanish, if anybody needs any of the handouts, they're in the back. You can raise your hand and, and William will take care of you. Uh, let's see. We'll go ahead and continue in song unto the Lord. Number 310. So send I you. <coughs>
Ed said, Josh's, Josh Sackboy is here, has been very helpful all week. And unbeknownst to him, when he said, you know, anything I can do to help the church, it meant that he got to go into my classroom <laughs> all morning. And uh, in four different classes, he presented Australia, he presented the gospel, and he gave a call to those 7th and 8th graders, does God want you to be a missionary? And I really appreciated that. I know it was a blessing to them. And then he left my class and went to kindergarten class. And I was told by the kindergarten teachers that he did an amazing job. So he has a... He has a calling of God. He wants to teach people. And I appreciate the fact that he presented to my students, is God calling you too? Because that's the goal of our church, to have not just support missionaries, but to have people be called by God to come out from our church and to serve him. And the song I'm playing is Holy, 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 because really no matter where you live, no matter what language you teach, God is holy. Amen. And we want you to serve him and to worship him and to understand who God is because he's beyond everything. He is God. visiting with us today. Anyone else? All right. We have uh, uh, Alan, right? Right? He's back here. Aaron. Yeah, Aaron, Aaron. 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 Aaron Allen. <laughs> he has a good last name. Right? <laughs> <clears throat> and he's Shanna's husband. He's going to be deployed uh, just a, a, short, a little time forward. And uh, he's going over to Europe uh, with those conflicts and everything that's going on. So you need to pray for him, all right. all right? We have much going on today, and I first want to remind you all that we believe in faith promise. This is how we support our missionaries, through faith promise. We, this is not the tithe. The tithe belongs to the Lord. But this is above the tithe. This is giving by grace. Whatever God would place on your heart to give on a monthly basis that we can support our four, more than 40 missionaries around the world. We want to take on more if God permits. And so please pray about this. What God would have you to give on a monthly basis 
for the honor and glory of the Lord. Help us to reach souls around the world. I want to also say that at the back table, those that want to give voluntarily above what we normally give our speakers, we give them an honorarium on behalf of the church, but we want to give the people an opportunity to give also from your heart. Whatever you give, everything will go to the missionary. It will go on top of the honorarium that we give them to help them to reach their needs and to get to the field. Amen? And so pray about that also. Note there's a separate plate. It's a separate plate. So don't put it in the tithe plate, put it in his plate. Yeah, there's, <laughs> you'll see on the, on the plate that it mentions the name of the missionary. So if you're going to give to the missionary, everything you put in there goes to missions. But if you put your tithe in there, uh, <laughs> I don't think Chris will be happy about that. No, I take it out. <laughs> I don't think she'll be happy about that. <clears throat> All right. This is time now. We've really enjoyed Josh. He's been at my house uh, for several days. I've got to get acquainted. I told him about my missionary days in Puerto Rico and the Caribbean all those years and shared with him a little bit. And so uh, he's a good guy. And not only that, he has God's call upon his life. And that's the most important thing. So at this time, I want to introduce to you Joshua Zacharias, missionary to Australia. Give him a good Temple High School. Applause. I know enough Spanish to get me in trouble. Bueno, yo sé lo suficientemente de inglés, de español para poder meterme en problemas. But it, All right. But I've enjoyed being with Pastor. He's been able to, to teach me some Spanish. Bueno, he, me, he disfrutado el tiempo con el pastor. Me ha enseñado un poquito de español. Right. If you have your Bibles, uh, take them to Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. Matthew 16, 24. Si tienen sus Biblias, uh, busquen Mateo, el Evangelio de San Mateo, versículo, uh, capítulo 16, versículo 24. Uh, so if you were here in Sunday school, uh, you heard my testimony, and uh, this uh, verse plays into my testimony uh, very significantly. Uh, si eh, estuvieron, con, estuvieron con nosotros, Compartiendo en el momento del estudio bíblico, eh, eh, sabre, sabrían que ese versículo es imperativo para mi llamado. So in 2018, I was able to take a missions trip to Australia. Entonces en el 2018 eh, pude uh, hacer una, un viaje de misionero a Australia. And uh, when I got to Australia, I had already become familiar with some of the spiritual needs, uh, but then I got to see those needs firsthand. Eh, pero cuando llegué a Australia, ya estaba un poco familiarizado con las necesidades espirituales de Australia, uh, pero en ese viaje pude verla de primera mano. And I was able to meet and connect with some of the believers there, and uh, the Lord really gave me a heart uh, for them and uh, prepared me for ministering with them in the future. Eh, y tuve la, la oportunidad de conocer y conectar con creyentes allí um, y prepararme en realidad lo que el Señor quiere para mí uh, para ministrar en Australia. And so I began praying for the Lord's will if he was calling me to Australia. And uh, one of my counselors, Stephen Maldoff, uh, was a missionary to Australia for a while. Uh, he advised me to pray and seek God's leading through Scripture. Eh, mire, eh, comencé a orar para saber cuál era la voluntad de Dios para mí y eh, busqué consejo. De hecho, uno de esos consejeros, Stephen Maldo, um, eh, quien fue misionero para Australia por mucho tiempo, uh, me aconsejó que orara y le pidiera a Dios que me enseñara eh, a través de las Escrituras. And as I was praying for the Lord's leading, I went to church one day and the Lord answered my prayer for Scripture uh, by speaking me to, from this verse, Matthew 16, 24. Y como cuando estaba visitando en la iglesia, 
eh, uno de esos domingos, el Señor me contestó mi oración a través de este versículo, Mateo 16, 24. Because I was kind of wrestling with whether or not I would be willing to give up my home country, my culture, my family to go to Australia. Uh, but the Lord spoke to me uh, through Matthew 16, 24, which says, uh, Jesus said unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Eh, yo en realidad estaba eh, batallando, ¿verdad?, con el hecho de que tenía familia acá eh, y tenía unas cuantas dudas que estaban acerca de Australia. Sin embargo, el Señor me enseñó Mateo 16, 24, lo cual dice, Entonces Jesús dijo a sus discípulos, Si alguno quiere venir en pos de mí, nieguese a sí mismo, tome su cruz y sígame. And the Lord used this verse to really seal in my heart that he wanted me to, to leave those being, things behind and follow him to Australia. Y el Señor contestó um, esas dudas eh, y me dijo, eh, sí, aquí está sellado, quiero que vayas a Australia a ministrar. Uh, but even more than calling me to Australia, uh, the Lord used this verse to call me to a life of commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ. Pero aún más, eh, el Señor no solamente me llamó a ministrar a Australia, sino también este versículo logró eh, confirmar mi llamado a un compromiso de vida para con Jesucristo. So, Matthew 16, 24 is a call to follow Jesus Christ. It is a call to commit your life to Jesus Christ. Entonces, lo que Mateo 16, 24 nos dice es un llamado a... Nosotros dedicar nuestra vida y seguir al Señor Jesucristo. Uh, Jesus says, if any man will come after me, if anyone will accept Jesus Christ, if anyone will embrace Christ's life, the values and the work that he began, if anyone will commit his life to following Jesus Christ, uh, Jesus is calling us to that life and he is challenging us to follow him. Si sí, Jesús dice, si cualquiera... Eh, si quiere, uh, me siguiere a mí, si cualquiera aceptara a Jesucristo, <coughs> si cualquiera eh, estuviera um, aceptando la vida de Cristo, sus valores, el trabajo, si a cualquiera estuviera eh, con el compromiso de vida para seguir a Cristo y siendo un ejemplo de vida, el Señor Jesucristo está llamando y nos está retando a nosotros a seguirle. So I have a question for you this morning. Are you living a committed life to Jesus Christ? Yo tengo una pregunta para ti. ¿Estás tú viviendo una vida de compromiso para con el Señor Jesucristo? So I don't know where you are. I don't know how committed you are. You may say, I am very committed. You may say, uh, I don't, to be honest, I'm, I'm not that committed right now. I've, I've been struggling spiritually. Uh, but regardless of that, uh, this decision, uh, this is not a one-time decision to follow Christ. Uh, this decision, uh, we have to take it up on a, a daily basis. Um, Jesus said in Luke 9, 23, uh, that we are to take up our cross daily. It's the same verse, except it adds that word daily. Uh, so after we accept Christ as Savior, daily we have to take up this cross. We have to daily decide that we're going to follow Jesus Christ. Entonces, mire, uh, no sé en qué eh, cuán, eh, comprometido está usted Uh, con el Señor Jesucristo. Uh, pero lo que sí sé es lo que dice Lucas 9.23, en donde tenemos que uh, tomar nuestra cruz diariamente. Uh, el compromiso para el Señor Jesucristo no es uno que uno hace una sola vez, es una decisión que uno hace diariamente. Uh, y uh, tenemos que, como dice en la Biblia, eh, tenemos que tomar esa decisión para estar para poder ser seguidores comprometidos con el Señor Jesucristo de una forma de un eh, a tiempo diario. Uh, so let me be clear. Uh, first of all, we must accept Jesus Christ as the Savior. We must accept him as the Messiah, the one that came into the earth to die on the cross for our sins, to take away our sins and to restore us to God. Eh, yo tengo que ser bien claro con esto. Primero, tenemos que tomar la decisión de aceptar a Cristo en nuestro corazón, aceptar a Cristo quien murió en la cruz por nuestros pecados y también resucitó para entonces poder seguirle a Él. Pero después de eso, Jesús Cristo nos llama a vivir una vida de compromiso a Él. 
Pero después de eso, eh, Jesús nos llama a tener una vida de compromiso para con Él. And we want to look at these three steps here in Matthew 16, 24 that will help us to live a committed life to Jesus Christ on a daily basis. Y vamos a ver que en este versículo hay tres pasos para poder uh, continuar con ese compro compromiso de seguir al Señor Jesucristo. Uh, so let's read the verse again to see these three steps of commitment. Entonces vamos a leerlo nuevamente este versículo para ver cuáles son esos tres pasos que debemos tener para poder seguir a Cristo. Uh, then said Jesus unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, one, let him deny himself, Two, take up his cross, and three, follow me. Entonces, dice, entonces Jesús le dijo a sus discípulos, si alguno quiere venir en pos de mí, uno, nieguese a sí mismo, dos, tome su cruz, y tres, sígame. All right, now before we begin with these three steps of commitment, I have to say, I know these concepts aren't necessarily um, desirable to us in our, our natural state. Uh, pero antes de que podamos comenzar con estos pasos, uh, yo sé que estos conceptos no son unos que uno pudiera decir que son deseables o que son convenientes. Uh, when we see a life of following Christ that leads us to suffering and, and sacrifice and persecution, we don't necessarily uh, naturally sing and rejoice about that, do we? Eh, cuando vemos uh, que uh, tenemos que uh, seguir una vida para con Cristo nos puede llevar a sacrificios, a penurias, a persecuciones. Necesariamente, uh, no de forma naturalmente, nosotros no cantamos ni nos regocijamos en este hecho. So, let's be honest. Who wakes up in the morning? Be honest. Who wakes up in the morning and the first thing you do is, yes, I get to deny myself today. Or, Or, uh, oh yes, this is going to be a great day. I get to take up a, a cross. It's filled with splinters. It's really heavy. It's going to weigh me down. This is going to be a great day. Sí, vamos a ser honestos con nosotros mismos. ¿Quién en la mañana se levanta así? Hoy día voy a denegar de mí mismo. Voy a tenerlo en sacrificio. O quién diría, ah, excelente. Hoy me llevo mi cruz. La voy a aguantar aunque tenga muchas astillas. Aunque pese demasiado. Nosotros no tenemos ese deseo naturalmente. Yet, as we face this challenge, Christ gives us another thought to consider. Pero, enfrentando este desafío, Cristo nos da otra cosa también, otro pensamiento para poder considerar. Look at verse 25. It says, For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Fíjense en el versículo 25. Porque todo aquel que quiera salvar su vida la perderá. Y todo el que la pierda su vida por causa de mí la hallará. In other words, if we try to live a life uh, in a way to protect our earthly dreams and desires at the expense of serving Christ, we will end up being disappointed with our life. The ambitions and goals of this life, of this world, will not bring lasting fulfillment, but only emptiness and regret. For the conclusion of our lives, life, not to mention loss of reward we could have had in heaven. Entonces, en otras palabras, si nosotros seguimos nuestros deseos uh, terrenales y uh, podemos eh, uh, poner en, en juego eh, las, uh, las cosas que pudiéramos recibir una vez que estemos con el Señor, y más bien estaríamos lamentándolo porque eso no cegará. Una, una recompensa eterna. But if we commit to a life of following Jesus Christ and we're willing to sacrifice our earthly longings in favor of our heavenly reward, we will find our life. Christ will give us a life of purpose and satisfaction and fulfillment far greater than anything else we can achieve for ourselves, not to mention a great reward in heaven. Pero si deseamos o si con, eh, hacemos el compromiso de vida de seguir a Jesucristo y sacrificamos esos deseos terrenales en favor de esas recompensas que vamos a recibir en el cielo. Eh, vamos a encontrar vida, vamos a encontrar que Cristo nos dará esa vida de propósito, de satisfacción y de plenitud que podremos lograr para nos, que lo que podremos lograr para nosotros mismos 
sin mencionar también aquellas recompensas que recibiremos en el cielo. So here's the point. If we are willing to pay the price of commitment, denying yourself, taking up our cross and following Christ, we will receive the prize of commitment. And that is a satisfied, meaningful life. Entonces este es el punto. Si estamos dispuestos a pagar por el precio del compromiso, el compromiso de negarnos a nosotros mismos, de tomar nuestra uh, cruz, de seguir a Cristo, estaremos recibiendo el premio de compromiso. Y eso es una vida con significado y satisfacción. So let's take these three steps of commitment so we can receive the prize of commitment. Entonces vamos a tomar estos tres pasos de compromiso para que de esa manera podamos recibir el premio de compromiso. Entonces un momento, vamos a tomar, antes de que hagamos eso, vamos a tomar un momento de oración para que Dios nos hable a nuestros corazones. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the salvation you offer in Christ. And thank you for the opportunity to hear the word today. I pray you'd speak to our hearts through it. Gracias por este tiempo que nos da, Señor. Esperemos, Dios, que hables a nuestros corazones y te agradecemos, Jehová, y prepara nuestros corazones para recibir este mensaje. All right, now let's begin with the first step of commitment, and that is the step of self-denial. Bueno, vamos a comenzar con el primer paso, y ese es el que uno se niega a sí mismo. What does it mean to deny yourself? Have you ever thought about that? What does it mean to deny yourself? ¿Alguna vez has pensado qué es lo que significa negarse a sí mismo? Um, eh, ¿Qué crees tú que es renegar de ti mismo? Um, there's a great word picture of this word deny in Scripture. Hay en la Biblia uh, una imagen muy muy excelente uh, de esta negación en la Biblia, en, en, en lo que ocurrió con Cristo. Uh, the Bible says that Peter denied Christ. Uh, think about this. When uh, that damsel came to Peter and said, hey, you were with him. He said, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, that happened again. Uh, again, he said, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, the men came to him and said, we know for sure you were with him because you talked like a Galilean. And uh, at that point, he began to curse and to swear. And he said, I don't even know The man. Uh, sí, eh, la Biblia nos dice que Pedro negó a Cristo cuando la doncella se acercó a Pedro y le dijo, tú estabas con él. Uh, y él le dijo, no, yo no sé de lo que hablas. Y luego le dijo, sí, este es uno de ellos. Eh, y además le dijeron, uh, sí, porque hablas como un galileo. Eh, y él en ese punto ya una y otra vez cuando vino a decir, Pedro en esos momentos comenzó a blasfemar. Y dijo, ni siquiera lo conozco ese hombre. Uh, so let's think about what did Peter do? He turned his back on Jesus Christ. He left Jesus Christ to die. ¿Y qué fue lo que hizo Pedro? Él le dio la espalda a Cristo. Entonces, ¿qué fue lo que hizo? Uh, lo dejó para que muriera. Uh, so this word deny, it means to disown. Entonces... Just like Peter turned his back, he disowned, he totally cut off every dis uh, association with Jesus Christ. Entonces, uh, lo que significa renegar eh, es como de eh, sencillamente quitar el vínculo y desconocerlo por completo. Uh, so, Jesus is saying that we are to deny ourselves. If we want to have a life of satisfaction and fulfillment, a truly fulfilling life, then we have to turn our back on ourselves. Entonces, eh, Jesús uh, lo que está diciéndonos es que tenemos que negarnos a nosotros mismos. Y cuando hacemos eso, podemos obtener una vida um, de logros y podemos obtener una vida de satisfacción en él. And you know what? Jesus Christ is the perfect example of what self-denial is. Y ¿saben qué? Jesucristo es el ejemplo perfecto de lo que es negarse a sí mismo. Uh, let's look at Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 8. Vamos a visitar eh, Filipenses capítulo 2, versículos del 5 al 8. 
Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Nuevamente, Filipenses, capítulo 2, versículos del 5 al 8. Haya, pues, en vosotros este sentir que hubo también en Cristo Jesús, el cual, siendo en forma de Dios, no estimó el ser igual a Dios como cosa a que aferrarse, sino que se despojó a sí mismo, tomando forma de siervo, hecho semejante a los hombres, y estando en la condición de hombre, se humilló a sí mismo, haciéndose ob obediente hasta la muerte y muerte de cruz. So Jesus showed us what it is to deny yourself, first of all, by humbling himself. Entonces, Jesús nos enseñó cómo nos negamos a nosotros mismos, uh, primer, primordialmente humillándose Él. So let's think about this. Jesus Christ, who is God, was God, never ceased being God, temporarily laid aside His glory to come down to earth, uh, to become a part of His creation, and, and not just to become a part of His creation, but to serve His creation. Entonces vamos a pensar un momento en esto. Um, él, Jesucristo, Jesús, Él quien es Dios, y fue Dios, es Dios, y nunca va a dejar de ser Dios, temporariamente se, se quitó de su gloria, se quitó de sí mismo para convertirse en un hombre, para convertirse en lo que es parte de su creación. Él, uh, siendo Rey de Reyes, Lord de, uh, eh, Señor de Señores, Vino a ser parte de nosotros como siervo. So, what amazing humility. Um, so, a question for you. Does your life reflect that kind of humility? Entonces, ¿qué humildad está enseñándonos? Ahora, una pregunta para ustedes. Uh, ¿Su vida enseña ese tipo de humildad? So, humility is the... One mark of self-denial. The second mark, you'll notice there, is obedience. Entonces, humildad es una de las marcas o de los síntomas. Uh, ahora, la segunda marca o la señal es obediencia. Uh, so, in the verse it says that Jesus became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Uh, remember in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus prayed, not my will, but thine be done. Uh, he was obedient even when uh, it meant death to him. Uh, he cried out, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? What a picture of self-denial. Uh, Jesus allowing himself to be, as it were, forsaken by God. He allowed himself to become sin for us. The Holy Lamb of God, who knew no sin, became sin so that we could be made his righteousness. Entonces, Jesús uh, fue obediente aún en la muerte de la cruz. Uh, re, yo recuerdo eh, como en el jardín de Getsemaní, él oró uh, y dijo, no mi voluntad, sino la tuya será hecha. Eh, él fue obediente aún cuando él estaba uh, clamando a Dios, mi Dios, mi Dios, ¿por qué me has olvidado? Qué imagen tan grande de, um, eh, de sacrificio de negarse a sí mismo. Jesús uh, lo que hizo fue que uh, fue olvidado por Dios en ese momento. Él permitió que su persona fuera lo que es el pecado en el Cordero de Dios que nunca había pecado. Se convirtió en pecado para que pudiéramos entonces nosotros ser justificados. So what humility, what obedience, what an example Jesus Christ leaves us of self-denial. Qué humildad, cuánta obediencia. Uh, este es el ejemplo que nos deja Jesucristo para con nosotros, para de poder nosotros denegar de nosotros mismos. Uh, so this concept of self-denial, this hit me uh, that Sunday I told you about earlier when the Lord used this verse to lead me to Australia. 
Entonces, este versículo, este concepto, fue lo que más me impactó una vez que en ese domingo yo lo escuché confirmando mi llamado a Australia. Uh, that Sunday, I was thinking of some things that I didn't want to give up. Uh, but if I'm just to be honest with you, I'm just a, a simple country boy from Alabama. Uh, there's nothing special about me. I grew up on a little, I guess you'd call a little farm raising chickens and cows and stuff. Uh, I don't want a lot or need a lot to make me happy. Uh, I'm a pretty content guy. Entonces, um, yo quiero ser honesto, honesto con ustedes. Uh, yo no necesito mucho, no necesito... Eh, mucho para ser feliz. Yo soy solamente un joven de Alabama que, pues, en tanto como, ¿verdad?, podamos decir, tengo mi granja, eh, eh, soy contento con lo que tengo, no necesito demasiadas cosas. Uh, so, if, if I have my heavenly father, family, food, and football, I think that's a pretty good life. I don't know if you're with me there. <laughs> sí, en tanto como yo tenga a mi padre celestial, familia, comida, y mi fútbol, yo estoy bien. Uh, but I remember sitting there that Sunday thinking about things I would have to give up. And uh, no lie, this thought actually crossed my, my head. Um, I was sitting there thinking, oh my goodness. And, and you have to forgive me, but I'm from South Alabama, so uh, the University of Alabama football coach is more important than the president of the United States. Uh, it's just the way it is in South Alabama. And I'm sitting there thinking, oh no, they don't have college football in Australia. Uh, Lord, this got really serious really fast. We're going to have to think about this. <laughs> Entonces, yo quiero ser totalmente honesto con ustedes. En el sur de Alabama, Alabama el coach o el, um, el que nos dirige uh, del fútbol eh, es ta, más importante que el mismo presidente. Y eso de que no vamos a tener ningún tipo de equipo de colegio de fútbol allá en Australia, oh, tenemos que sencillamente, señor, visitar nuevamente esta decisión de mudarnos o de dejar esto atrás. Uh, on a more serious note, I realized that I would have to leave family. I've always lived pretty close to family. I would go home on the weekends all the time, but uh, to go to Australia, uh, back and forth to South Alabama, it takes the whole weekend just to get there. Entonces, en una nota más seria, uh, me di cuenta además que también tendría que dejar mi familia. Eh, entonces, no va a haber fines de semana que yo pueda ir de Australia al sur de Alabama. Eh, de hecho, toma un fin de semana solamente para viajar desde Australia a sur de Alabama. Uh, but I came across this quote that is encouraging. It says, a missionary is someone who leaves their family for a short time so others may be with their families for eternity. Amen. Entonces, pero encontré esta, este mensaje y dice así, un misiona, misionero es alguien que deja su familia por un periodo corto de tiempo para que otros puedan tener sus familias por la eternidad. So, you know, the self-denial, it is worth it. Entonces, el negarse a sí mismo es válido y vale la pena hacerlo. And I wonder if there isn't someone here like me this morning. Maybe you're in, in my shoes. God has been working in your life, in your heart, about giving up something so that you can serve him. Uh, would you be willing to sacrifice that for Jesus Christ? Y me, me pregunto yo, a lo mejor aquí hay alguien entre nosotros que está luchando, batallando con esto, um, que no quiere dejar familia, pero que quiere um, servirle al Señor. En esta mañana, tú te rendirías y harías el sacrificio de servir a Dios. And I don't want you to forget, if you are willing to pay the price of commitment, self-denial, you'll receive the prize of commitment, a y satisfied no, life. Uh -huh. Entonces, no quiero que se olviden de que si están ustedes dispuestos a hacer el compromiso, entonces usted sí tendrá el regalo, tendrá la promesa de parte del compromiso. I wonder, would you say today that you have a satisfied life? If you can't say yes to that, then I want to I want to ask you why not embrace this life that Jesus Christ offers you. Me pregunto eh, si está dispuesto a seguir ese precio del compromiso, eh, ese de negarse a sí mismo. Um, me gustaría dejarte saber y recordarte que estaremos recibiendo ese premio de compromiso y seguiremos y siguiendo al Señor 
será una vida satisfecha. So that's the first step of commitment, self-denial. Now let's look at the second step, uh, taking up our cross. Entonces, ese es el primer paso, um, ¿verdad? De negarse a sí mismo. El segundo es, toma tu cruz. Uh, so what is the cross? What is Jesus referring to when he says, take up your cross? Um, today we think of the cross as a symbol of love and sacrifice. Uh, because of what Jesus has, has done for us, because of what he did on the cross, and rightfully so. Uh, but before Jesus' day, the cross was not a symbol of love and sacrifice. Uh, so what did the cross represent? Entonces, eh, antes de que entremos en la discusión de lo que es la cruz, um, vamos a ver que en, um, eh, qué es lo que significa o implica la cruz. Uh, eh, para nosotros... En nuestros días es un símbolo de amor y de sacrificio porque fue donde Jesús murió y uh, por, por nosotros. Pero antes de eso, uh, Jesús, la cruz, no era un símbolo uh, de amor. Entonces vamos a pensar qué significa, qué simboliza la cruz. Ultimately, really what the cross represents, it was a, a shameful, painful way to die. It was a painful form of execution. Eh, últimamente lo que es lo que representa es una forma vergonzosa dolorosa y um, para poder terminar con alguien it was a form of punishment for the worst of the worst criminals there was no uh, glory there was no uh, positive connotation with the cross eh, y estaba eh, designada para aquellos que fueran los peores criminales, eh, eh, no había ninguna gloria en la cruz. Eh, en la cruz lo único que era equivalente era a, a dolor humillante y vergonzoso, la muerte en sí. So, what does it mean for us to take up our cross? Well, I believe that Mark chapter 10 verse 45 helps us understand that concept. Entonces, ¿qué es lo que significa para nosotros Toma tu cruz. Um, yo creo que eso lo podemos observar en Marcos 10, 45. Uh, Mark 10, 45 says, For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. Marcos 10, 45 dice, Porque el Hijo del Hombre no vino para ser servido, sino para servir y para dar su vida en rescate por muchos. Uh, so that was Christ's purpose, to come to die on the cross for the sins of the world. Entonces eso fue el propósito de Cristo. Él vino a la tierra para morir por los pecados de algunos. Uh, so dying on the cross, Jesus accomplished his purpose. Uh, similarly, for us, uh, taking up our cross means giving our lives to accomplish God's purpose. Entonces, Cristo vino aquí, dio su vida para poder llevar a cabo o lograr el propósito de Dios. Y de forma similar, eso es lo que nos dice, toma tu cruz, implica el que nosotros damos nuestras vidas para lograr el propósito de Dios. Let me say that one more time. Taking up our cross is giving our lives to accomplish God's purpose. Permítame decirles nuevamente, el tomar su cruz es entregar nuestras vidas para que el propósito de Dios se cumpla. Uh, so question, would you be willing, would you be willing to die for Jesus Christ? Pregunta, ¿estarían ustedes dispuestos a morir por Cristo? If you had to make that choice, if, if you were one of the Americans left behind in Afghanistan, and you were faced with that very real choice of either turning your back on Jesus Christ or, or, or dying, which would you choose? Si usted tuviera que tomar una decisión así, si fuera uno de esos americanos que hayan permanecido en Afganistán y en un momento dado, usted tiene que decidir darle la espalda a Cristo o morir, ¿qué escogería usted? Would you be willing to give your life to, to remain faithful to Christ? Would you be willing to suffer for Jesus Christ? ¿Estarías tú dispuesto a morir? ¿Estarías dispuesto a 
seguir a Cristo y no negar su nombre. Here's another question, though. Hopefully we'll never have to face that question when we die for Christ, but uh, here's another question. Would you be willing to live for Jesus Christ? Bueno, y estamos esperanzados de que esa, uh, esa situación nunca ocurra. Pero aquí hay otra pregunta. ¿Usted estaría dispuesto a vivir por el Señor Jesucristo? Uh, so, in other words, are you giving your life for God's purpose in the way that you live? Are you living in a way that crucifies your flesh so that you can live for God? En otras palabras... ¿Está usted dispuesto a vivir por Cristo? ¿Estás tú dando tu vida para el propósito de Dios? ¿Estás viviendo en una manera en donde tú crucificas su carne para poder vivir uh, como Dios te pide? Uh, for example, when you look at the remainder of your life, and I know that none of us are promised tomorrow, uh, but when you think, oh, I might have this many years left with my life, uh, who is setting the agenda for your life? Or who is uh, setting your goals? For your life, what you want to accomplish with your life. Eh, por ejemplo, cuando podemos observar lo que nos queda de vida, um, ¿verdad? Eh, pensando en qué humanamente podemos, ¿verdad? Tener el tiempo, aunque sabemos que mañana nunca está prometido. ¿Quién es el que está uh, creando tu agenda? ¿Quién está haciendo? Um, eh, ¿Cuáles son tus metas? Que tú logres estas metas. ¿Qué, ¿Quién está haciendo eso? ¿Quién lo dirige? Are you simply living for the things of this world, the temporal things of this world? Or, or do your goals fit with what God put you on earth for? Simplemente está viviendo por las metas que usted se propone aquí en la vida, en la, en la tierra. O usted está tratando de lograr el propósito que Dios le ha dado cuando lo colocó aquí en la tierra. Because you can achieve all the wealth, all the fame of this world, but when you die... It's over. Porque cuando usted puede acumular eh, riquezas, puede acumular um, muchas cosas. Sin embargo, cuando muera, todo acaba. Pero si vives para Dios, vas a tener grandes recompensas en el cielo. Uh, back to the question, are you living are you willing to live for Christ uh, let's say it this way when you wake up each morning whose agenda do you live for uh, de vuelta la pregunta para quién estás viviendo cuando tú te levantas en la mañana uh, te haces la pregunta cuál es de quién es la agenda de mi vida do you quickly take up your to-do list do you quickly look at your schedule and start checking off Uh, the things that you have to do for that day? Uh, or do you stop and take a moment and say, Lord, uh, what is your agenda for me today? Usted rápidamente que se levanta, toma su lista, eh, se levanta y puede observar esa lista de las cosas que tiene que hacer y comienza a checar ca cajitas diciendo, bueno, eh, esto eh, es lo que me toca para el horario de hoy. O si por el contrario... Eh, le preguntas a Dios, Señor, ¿qué es lo que tú quieres lograr con el propósito en el día de hoy para mí? Uh, can I make a confession? ¿Puedo hacer una confesión? Everybody's, I've got everybody's attention because everybody wants to hear when the preacher makes a confession. Right? Sí, tengo la atención de todo el mundo porque todo el mundo quiere saber qué es lo que va a confesar el predicador. I have to admit, I have missed some opportunities to serve the Lord because I too quickly got focused on my, my to-do list or on my schedule and I failed to see maybe an interruption that was brought into my day as an opportunity to serve the Lord. And, and I, I just quickly dismissed it like shooing away a fly rather than seeing uh, that person that the Lord brought me as an opportunity to minister. Uh, yo puedo dejarles saber que he sido... Uh, culpable de que he fallado, ¿verdad? Uh, eh, he perdido aqu algunas oportunidades uh, para poder ministrar, eh, ¿verdad? Por estar muy ocupado en esa lista de quehaceres uh, y eh, ha 
una persona que haya interrumpido ese horario, uh, he perdido esa oportunidad de poder ministrar eh, rápidamente, uno sencillamente lo espanta como si fuera una mosca, eh, como si fuera algo, y eh, sencillamente no le di la atención de la oportunidad que Dios me dio en ese momento. And uh, I'm, I'm ashamed of that short-sightedness, uh, but I'm thankful that Jesus Christ did not have that. He had uh, the eternal in mind, and when he was interrupted in his schedule, uh, we see him often taking time for those blind, sickly people uh, that easily could have been brushed away as unimportant. Eh, pero de verdad que me avergüenza, pero también de manera me, me, de buena manera el Señor Jesucristo eh, nunca fue, estuvo tan ocupado para con nadie esas interrupciones él las, eh, las tomaba en consideración siempre pensando en el plano eterno es, esa interrupción por más pequeña que fuera él siempre Tenía tiempo para aquella persona que se encontraba totalmente ciega y con la cual tenía la oportunidad de ministrar. We need to live each day for God's purpose. Uh, taking up our crosses, dying to our plans and our purposes so that we can live unto God. Eh, nosotros tenemos que tomar nuestra cruz y tenemos que morir para nuestros deseos para poder continuar, seguir con los planes y el propósito que tiene Dios para ti. And again, I want to remind you, if we are willing to, to pay the price of commitment, we're willing to embrace this cross, taking up our cross, we will receive the prize of commitment, and that is a meaningful life. Y nuevamente quiero que tengan en cuenta de que si ustedes están dispuestos a pagar el precio de eh, el compromiso, verdad, de cargar nuestra o de tomar nuestra cruz, estaremos recibiendo el premio, el alandón de el compromiso y lo que es una vida significativa. Because when we give our lives to Christ, that is when we find purpose in life. God is our creator. He's the one that has given us life. He's the one that has given us purpose. Porque nuevamente, cuando nosotros entregamos nuestra vida a Cristo, podemos encontrar el propósito para nuestra vida. Él es nuestro creador y Él es el que nos deja saber cuál es nuestro propósito sirviéndole a Él. So we talked about two steps of commitment, denying self and taking up our cross. Let's move to the third now. Bueno, estuvimos hablando ya con dos pasos de eh, compromiso. El primero, uh, donde se, nos negamos a nosotros mismos y luego toma tu cruz, vamos a movernos al tercero. Uh, thirdly, Jesus said we are to follow him. Y la tercera dice, te, Jesús dijo, tenemos que seguir, te, me tienen que seguir a mí. Uh, the word follow simply means to accompany. And the disciples are a great example of followers of Christ. They went with Christ from place to place. Uh, they got to be there with him as he, uh, as he fed the 5,000, as he interacted with those, those sickly and the lame, uh, they got to follow him and, and watch him as he taught. Entonces, um, eh, seguir a Cristo lo que significa es acompañar. Y los discípulos son un gran ejemplo de lo que es seguir a Cristo. Ellos acompañaban a Jesús donde quiera que iba, de sitio en sitio. Ellos estuvieron allí cuando uh, Cristo alimentó a los 5,000. Ellos estuvieron allí <coughs> viendo la interacción con aquellos enfermos, uh, ellos estaban presentes con él. Uh, who would have liked to have been there when Jesus fed the 5,000? ¿A quién le hubiese gustado estar allí cuando Dio Jesús eh, alimentó a los 5,000? Uh, to see Jesus as he broke the bread, those five loaves and two fish, and, and maybe to see the look on Philip's face. What in the world? I mean, mm -hmm. Philip counted the, the, the fish and the bread. Uh, eh, ¿Verdad? Ver cómo él partió esos cinco panes, cómo él hizo eso, y también mir mirar la cara de Philip cuando se fijó, espérate, que yo conté, ¿qué pasó? Or to hear Jesus as he taught, uh, to hear the, the best preaching in the world, definitely a lot better than you're getting this Sunday, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> y y tam o, o, también escuchar a Cristo predicar, o sea, el mejor 
para poder predicar y definitivamente mejor de lo que ese predicador puede hacer, así es que lo siento de antemano. Sí, yo sé que estarán pensando ya en este momento, bueno, eso suena bastante bien, Josh, pero uh, en estos momentos nosotros no es que podamos levantarnos y caminar y seguirle a Cristo uh, físicamente. Eh, ahora no podemos hacer nada de eso. Uh, yes, Jesus physically is not here anymore, but he left his life, really, his example in a book. It's called the Bible. We can see Jesus Christ in the pages of Scripture. We can hear his voice in his, in his word. Entonces, sí, es cierto. Hace dos mil años, él no físicamente nos encuentra, pero sí podemos verlos. Podemos verlo a través de las páginas de la escritura, podemos ver su ejemplo, podemos ver su vida en este libro que son las Sagradas Escrituras. Uh, en el día de hoy, sí podemos seguir a Cristo según leemos y estudiamos su palabra. So, we can see Jesus in Scripture, we can hear him through the Bible, but do we really treat the Bible like we believe that? Bueno, entonces sí podemos ver, verlo a Cristo en las páginas de escritura, podemos escuchar su voz a través de su palabra, pero en realidad estamos yendo a, a la palabra. You know, if Jesus Christ were the one up here speaking, I think we would all be on the front of our seat, we'd be all giving the utmost attention, uh, but when we go to our private time in devotions, I have to constantly remind myself, when I do my devotions, when I hear the preaching of God's word that this is Jesus Christ speaking to me. Amen. Bueno, eh, uh, si Jesucristo estuviera aquí enfrente de nosotros, estuviéramos ya en la silla mirando atentamente con toda nuestra atención, con toda nuestra intención, pero estamos haciendo lo mismo cuando estamos en nuestro lugar privado, um, donde tenemos la Biblia que podemos escuchar al Señor Jesucristo. A muchas ocasiones tenemos que recordarnos, este es Cristo, eh, en la palabra, en la escritura. So we follow Jesus Christ by, by reading his word, by, by getting it into our hearts, uh, so that we know what he wants us to do. Entonces, uh, seguimos a Cristo leyendo lo que es la Biblia, y también haciendo lo que dice, y poniéndonos en nuestros corazones para conocer exactamente qué él quiere de nosotros. Uh, because that's the reason why we, we study God's word, is so we can know what he wants us to do, so that we can then imitate him. That's what a follower is, a follower is an imitator. Uh, we are to be imitators of Jesus Christ. Eh, y eso es lo que estamos haciendo. Estudiamos, escudriñamos la palabra y las escrituras para que últimamente podamos seguir a Cristo, podamos imitar el ejemplo que nos ha dejado. Eh, somos imitadores de Cristo. And what was the work that we are to imitate uh, that Jesus left for us to do? Uh, it was the work of worldwide evangelism. The Bible says, uh, Luke 19:10, For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Entonces, ¿qué es lo que Cristo vino aquí? ¿Qué, qué, así, ¿Qué nos dejó a nosotros para lograr? Y es el evan la evangel evangelización del mundo entero. Uh, entonces, eso lo, lo vemos en Lucas 19.10. So, are we busy about his work? Or, or do we maybe perhaps allow our schedules to get so busy? Uh, do we get off focus where... Uh, days go by, maybe even weeks go by, where we lay our heads on our pillow at night, and we have not really even thought to share the gospel with someone who is lost. Entonces, estamos uh, ocupados con su trabajo. Uh, nuestros horarios se encuentran tan ocupados y eh, sin ningún tiempo, en donde hay ocasiones que hay días, semanas a, a veces, en que no compartimos lo que es las buenas nuevas con alguien que está perdido. Uh, remember, there are people all around us dying in sin, separated from Christ, headed to eternal punishment, and we have to reach them. Recuerden que tenemos personas alrededor de nosotros que uh, están muriendo 
en el pecado, que están yendo para la eterna condenación y tenemos que alcanzarlos. Uh, remember, Jesus Christ said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. The goal, the, the result that Jesus wants is for us to be fishers of men. Eh, recuerden eh, que Cristo dijo, sígame y yo los haré a ustedes, pescado, pescadores de hom hombres. Uh, es nuestra meta el ser pescadores de almas, de personas. And think about it, we have an awesome opportunity. God has allowed us to be a part of his plan for worldwide redemption. You know, he could have plastered the gospel all over the sky. He could have uh, sent his angels to do the work, but... But he allowed us, think about it, he allowed us to be a part of his plan to, to reach the world with the gospel. Entonces piensen acerca de la oportunidad tan extraordinaria en donde él nos permite a nosotros ser parte de lo que es la redención del mundo. Um, él nos quiere a nosotros. Él pudo haber enviado los ángeles. Él pudo haber puesto um, anuncios en el cielo. Él pudo haber hecho muchas cosas. Sin embargo, nos eligió a nosotros para ser parte de ese plan. So, are you doing your part to reach the world for the gospel of Jesus Christ? Are you being a committed follower, an imitator of Jesus Christ? Entonces, ¿está usted haciendo su parte en lo que es el plan de Dios? ¿Está usted comprometido a ser seguidor de Jesucristo? I pray that God gives us boldness to speak to those around us, those we come in contact with, to share the gospel. Yo oro que nos dé la fortaleza uh, y la forma en que nosotros podamos continuar alcanzando Aquellos que se encuentran alrededor de nosotros con las buenas nuevas. Uh, so as we conclude, are you committed to following Jesus Christ? Are you in the habit of denying yourself, uh, taking up your cross and following Jesus Christ? Entonces, así como estamos concluyendo en estos momentos, ¿está usted comprometido a ser seguidor de Jesucristo? ¿Está usted en el hábito de cada día negarse a sí mismo, tomando su cruz, y siguiendo a Cristo. And remember, the commitment will be worth it. Whoever will lose his life for Christ's sake, Jesus said, he shall find it. Y recuerde, el compromiso va a valer la pena. Porque Cristo dijo, aquel que pierda su vida por mí, la encontrará. And so I'll close with a, a word of testimony. Obviously, Jesus Christ himself models this. He, he denied himself. He took up the cross. And the Bible says that he was glorified. He'll be glorified. Every knee will bow to Jesus Christ as Lord. Entonces, obviamente, eh, quiero darle mi testimonio. Uh, sí, Jesucristo es nuestro modelo y Él dejó su vida, pero uh, no solamente eh, resucitó, sino que uh, va a ser glorificado. Toda rodilla se, uh, uh, se pondrá ante Él. And I haven't experienced self-denial and take up the cross to the extent that Christ has. Uh, but I know that the last couple of years when God used this verse to, to lead me to Australia that uh, there were some things that I had to deny. Uh, I had to, to give up some plans, some ideas. I had to, to do some things. I had to embrace some things that I wouldn't necessarily have chosen on my own. Entonces, eh, para ser honesto con ustedes, uh, al llamado de Cristo, uh, yo tuve que dejar unas cosas atrás para poder lograr lo que Dios o el propósito tiene para mí, yo tuve que uh, dejar unas ideas, unos planes que yo tenía, una, y a escoger unas cosas que yo no necesariamente hubiera escogido. And as I have surrendered my plans to God, I've seen God begin to take control. I begin, I've seen God uh, at work in my life. Y comenzando a rendirme ante los pies, ante ante el Señor Jesucristo y dejándole el control a Él, yo he podido observar su mano, yo he podido observar su propósito trabajando en mí y uh, lidiando con mi persona. And as I deny myself, I see that verse 25 is becoming more real to me. Uh, as I am, in a sense, losing the life I thought I might want, God is replacing that 
with the life that is so satisfying, so fulfilling, because I know I'm doing what God wants. Entonces, eh, según uh, me estoy negando a mí mismo, puedo ver más aún lo que dice el versículo 25. Uh, veo estas cosas que antes yo pensaba que era lo que me gustaba y que supuestamente están perdidas. Están siendo reemplazadas con estas que son las que tiene el Señor para mí, el que tiene Jesucristo, uh, donde me enseña el propósito, donde me da satisfacción, donde también puedo sentir plenitud. You know, God wants to give you a life of purpose and of satisfaction and fulfillment as well. But you have to commit to Jesus Christ. Dios quiere darte a ti y a tu vida un propósito, la, la satisfacción también, y también en la plenitud. Pero debes comprometerte con Cristo. So, will you pay the price of commitment so that you can receive the prize ¿Estarías tú dispuesto a pagar el precio de lo que es el compromiso para que así puedas recibir el galardón del compromiso? Man, so thankful you came here this morning and uh, to hear Josh out and uh, his calling and how God called him. The question is, what are you in this life for? Why has God placed you in Tampa, Florida? What are you here for? There are many people here from other countries. Why did God permit you to come to Tampa? Can you think about that? Why did God permit you to be born here in Tampa? You're not here just to be here. You're here with a purpose. Number one, you belong to God. Number two, what are, what are you to do with this life that God has given you? Are you just going to be on a lump like uh, a lump on a log? No. We need to live our life with purpose. Make your life count. Make it count. Think about that. I decided a long time ago. I said this when I God called me to preach. Since Christ gave his life for me, I'm going to give him the rest of my life. Amen. That's all there is to it. From that day forward, I've been serving the Lord. You have to make a clear-cut decision. What are you doing? Really, what are you doing with your life, which isn't yours? It's God's. I know he prayed already, but I feel like praying. Yeah. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the Word of God that is ever and always touching hearts. We've been reminded once again if we are to follow Christ truly, we are to deny ourselves, pick up our cross, and follow Him. Walk with Him. Father, I pray that that will permeate in the minds of everyone here today and be pierced in our hearts. May we not forget it. I ask in Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. I just want to remind you, we have on the table uh, a plate with his name on it. If you would like to give him something on beyond, from your heart, that would be welcome. I want you to be here tonight. What, what is tonight? What's happening tonight? <laughs> Do you know what's happening tonight? Josh is preaching. <laughs> <laughs> There's a Super Bowl, but we're going to have the soup.
of the gospel. <clears throat> We're going to have a soup of the gospel. Say the soup of the gospel? Yeah. We're going to hear it. It's going to nurture us. Amen? I invite you uh, to come. I'm sure that you won't miss the whole Super Bowl. Maybe you might miss a little part. And uh, I don't know if you like the intermissions or not. But be here. Come and be a part of those that are faithful. Amen? All right, come on. Give us the announcements. All right. The evening <laughs> service will be at 6 p.m. tonight. And please come as we'll be having Josh Zacharias preach again. Esta noche estaremos escuchando de parte de George Zacharias a las 6 de la noche. Por favor, vengan y únanse a nosotros. And then on Wednesday at 6 p.m. we'll have uh, English and Spanish Bible study and with Awana for the kids. El día miércoles estaremos est eh, teniendo el estudio bíblico tanto en inglés como en español y Awana para los niños a las 6 de la tarde. And then uh, next Friday, the 25th, there will be Friday Night Youth Outreach from 7 to 9 p.m. Y el uh, siguiente viernes donde tendremos la reunión para los jóvenes es el día 25 de febrero de 7 a 9 de la noche. And then Saturday, March 5th, there will be a drop-in baby shower from noon to 4 p.m. for Andrew Dial. Um, el día sábado 5 de marzo estaremos uh, um, oficiando el, el baby shower desde la mediodía hasta las 4 para Andrea Dial. And as always, please check your bulletin for upcoming events. Y como siempre, por favor, chequen el boletín.